So if we're thinking about temperature and spontaneity, we will discover that the, it, when the temperature rises, T delta S increases if delta S is a positive value. That's because we said delta S was the slope. If we go back to the previous one, here's delta S with a positive slope. So as T increases, the line goes up. And since that's the part that is being subtracted, then delta H minus this number was going to give you a negative number and you'll have a spontaneous reaction. So that is what is going on there. When you have delta G equal to zero, the reaction's at equilibrium. That's when delta H is exactly equal to T delta S. And what happens is as you have a spontaneous reaction occur, the reactants are becoming products. Delta G of the reaction can become less negative and delta G of the reaction can reach zero and so it can stop in the middle. This is not something we're used to thinking about because in Chem 2 we talked about things that just went to completion. A process goes from this side, it becomes these things, period. But we have a situation where as the process continues, you can end up with delta G becoming zero. This can happen for a variety of reasons. As it's going, it's creating heat, so it's actually starting to operate at a different temperature or it's absorbing heat. So it's, again, operating at a different temperature, but at any rate, you end up in a situation where it can pause at a place where there are both reactants and products still left. Equilibrium reverse reaction is proceeding at the same rate as the forward reaction. We're gonna do one more problem here. And we have a, a situation where we're trying to look at the spontaneity and we're also wanting to compare what's going on with delta H and delta S. Here's the equation. We're going to have ammonia decomposing into nitrogen and hydrogen. If all we're asked is, is it spontaneous at normal temperatures? We would be able to use this equation, which has only Gibbs free energy in it, but it's also possible for us to do the same thing using delta H and delta S. So first we'll do the problem with the top equation, two of the ammonia, and it's going to decompose and form a nitrogen uh, molecule and three hydrogen molecules. The delta G is going to be products minus reactants and if we go look them up we discover that the products this is the natural state of nitrogen and that's the natural state of hydrogen those end up giving us zeros for their gibbs free energy then two moles of the ammonia times the gibbs free energy for ammonia which happens to be a negative number joules per mole okay, moles will now cancel out and we'll end up with a positive number, which means that this is not spontaneous at standard conditions. What though does this mean in terms of the delta H and delta S? So we'll go ahead and we'll do this again. This time we're gonna do it using the second equation. If we go look up delta H for these, we are going to find that, hey, this is its natural state, it's still a zero. This is its natural state, still a zero. For the ammonia, we get a number, 46.1 kilojoules per mole. We go do the same thing and look at the delta S, the entropies. Now these are not gonna be zero. We can go look them up. We find out that we have for hydrogen, 130.6. For the nitrogen, 191.5. And for the ammonia, Ammonia, 192.5. And all of these have joules per mole Kelvin. If I look at delta H then, and I want to do products minus reactants, then I'm going to get zero, because those were the products, minus, and then there's two moles times the negative 46.1 kilojoules per mole, and I'll end up with a positive number, 92.2 kilojoules and this is where you would think oh well gosh that means you had to put energy in to make this happen it's not going to happen this would make you think not spontaneous if you look at delta s 
in the same way, your products minus your reactants, a little more complicated because we don't have a bunch of zeros this time. So we have to do just a little more work. We have the products. There will be three of these hydrogens. The, the three times the 130.6, you're gonna get 391.8. And the other product is the nitrogen. So add that in and then minus the reactants. Okay, two of these, that's going to be 385. When you get all done doing this with your nice calculator, you're going to get a positive number, 198.3 joules per Kelvin. The moles did cancel out again, but we still have the per Kelvin. All right, and this, a positive number for delta S, would tend to make us think that this would be spontaneous. So we have something telling us that it won't proceed and we have something telling us that it will proceed. So this means that we do definitely have a crossover temperature. And now if we proceed to look for that crossover temperature, we're going to look at this and say, when does the crossover temperature happen? Well, it happens when delta G is zero, which means that delta H minus T delta S is going to be equal to zero. And I can just simply rearrange that notion to say, when is delta H equal to T delta S? Let me rearrange that again. What is T? It's delta H over delta S. So I can just go ahead and put those numbers in, the 92.2, then it's 0.1983 kilojoules. The K is belonging to temperature. And then I just come up with the crossover temperature is 496 Kelvin. So while this would not be spontaneous at standard temperatures, when we raise the temperature up enough, the ammonia will spontaneously decompose, forming the nitrogen and the hydrogens. If we had a case where this was positive and this was negative, then if you went through this process, you would end up saying, oh, yeah, I'd get a negative number for temperature. But the whole point of the Kelvin system is that there is no way to have negative temperatures. Absolute zero is zero. Everything else is positive. So you would just get nonsense if you tried to do this. If we had it in and tried to interpret it in another way, where we, if we had a situation where this was positive, and delta S was negative, that would say that as we absorbed heat, something became more ordered. That's just not normal. If you absorb heat, then things uh, move faster and automatically that's less ordered. This is what we're trying to remember here, is what the meaning is behind the crossover temperature and the different interpretations of what delta H and delta S do individually and what they do together in the context of Gibbs free energy.